So good afternoon. I hope everybody can hear okay. My name is Stephen Mark Williams. I'm the Executive Director of ETP, uh, the Scottish Funding Council funded academic research pool in energy and our job is to coordinate research activity in energy across um, Scottish academia and also to connect uh, academia with uh, industry. So I'm uh, very happy to present this which is the fifth webinar in the series on the ETP uh, Scott Chem webinar series and today we will be talking about the National Energy Research Demonstrator Centre as it's there on the screen or NERD unfortunately uh, which is actually as part of the um, Ayrshire Growth Deal. Uh, so we have um, two speakers for you today who will tell you a bit about it. Uh, we have Lorna uh, from East Ayrshire Council, I believe, I hope that's correct, Lorna? Yes, that's correct. Thank you, okay, who is the project lead? And we have Paul Tui, who's like the um, expert lead, if you like, uh, who is from ESRU, that's the um, Energy Systems Research Unit in the um, University of Strathclyde. So uh, without further ado, I'll pass over to you, Lorna. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining this session of the ETP Scott Chem webinar series. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, so for the structure of this session, myself and Paul will present for around 30 minutes. I will set a bit of context to the project and the wider Ayrshire growth deal, including looking at the development of the Cumnock area. And Paul will go into the more technical side of the project and what we hope to achieve over the next 10 years. Um, at the end, there will be opportunity for questions and further discussion. So again, thank you for joining this webinar on the National Energy Research Demonstrator Project or the NERD project, which is one of the projects which is part of the Ayrshire Growth Deal. This project has been developed around the idea of place, specifically the Cumnock area by looking to build on its existing built and natural assets to help the town and surrounding areas transition to low carbon. So just to set a bit of context, the Ayrshire Growth Deal is intended to act as a powerful catalyst to stimulate growth and increase job opportunities and prosperity within the Ayrshire region. The Ayrshire region being the local authority areas of North, East and South Ayrshire. The Ayrshire Growth Deal is based around five broad themes, aerospace and space, energy, marine, manufacturing and tourism. The heads of terms for the deal were signed in March 2019 and this committed the UK and Scottish governments and three Ayrshire local authorities to a £250 million package of investment. This translates into 22 projects which will be delivered over a 15 year period with the intention of bringing 7,000 new jobs to the region. Some notable projects that you may have heard in the press are the HALO project in Kilmarnock, the spaceport at Prestwick Airport and marine tourism around Irvine Harbour side. Clean growth is at the heart of the Ayrshire Growth Deal and the new regional economic strategy and this is something that the NERD project will aim to deliver. Business cases for all the projects have been submitted to both governments and we anticipate the deal to be signed off by ministers soon. Next slide please Paul. So to develop the NERD project we looked at the timeline of targets that have been published by the Scottish Government. Now these are just some of the targets that we need to get to in order for Scotland to achieve net zero by 2045. Next slide please Paul. So thinking about how we get to being net zero by 2045, how does this translate into a place? We need to start thinking more locally as the country can't be carbon neutral if our towns aren't and our towns can't be carbon neutral until our electricity buildings and transport are. Therefore, our main aspiration for the NERD project is to make Cumnock Scotland's first low carbon community and act as an exemplar for transitioning towns across Scotland so that we can collectively reach the 2045 net zero carbon target. Next slide, please. The National Energy Research Demonstrator Project will be a critical enabler to the future world by transforming energy production, storage and distribution within Ayrshire and beyond. It is our ambition that the, the Cumnock area and the Ayrshire region become an exemplar for transitioning to a low carbon society by repurposing the area's existing industrial and natural assets to create energy self-sufficient communities. The project is funded by £17 million allocated from the UK government and a further £7.5 million allocated from East Ayrshire Council. Next slide. The objectives of the project are out outlined here. 
firstly with the ambition to develop the energy system of the future and in turn, in turn stimulate change across Scotland and the UK. The project will also create a nationally significant centre of excellence for energy systems research and allow us to understand the impact that these new technologies will bring. It is anticipated that the centre of excellence will commence construction in 2022. Demonstrator projects will support the development and delivery of new innovative and highly efficient energy generation, storage and distribution systems in order to create a flexible, locally distributed grid that enables communities to be energy self-sufficient. This project will attract new business and economic activity to the area with the offering of state-of-the-art technology within the Centre of Excellence and the opportunity for businesses to work collaboratively with academics. We have ambitious targets in relation to achieving net zero and this project will enable Scotland to become a pioneer in renewable energy technology with Cumnock and Ayrshire at the forefront. Next slide please. So why Cumnock um, and its surrounding area? Well Cumnock is the second largest settlement in East Ayrshire supporting a number of surrounding communities stretching from Dalmellington in the south to Muirkirk in the east and servicing the needs of some 35,000 people. It is located on the main arterial links to Dumfries, Kilmarnock, Ayr and Edinburgh. In terms of demographics, Cumnock is typical of other industrialised towns across Scotland. However, the area does have high levels of fuel poverty, something that the NERD project will help to reduce. Cumnock has a history spanning over 450 years, with hints of its Victorian market town history evident within the town centre. Cumnock and its surrounding area have a long history of mineral extraction with deep mining and more recently open cast coal mining, contributing to East Ayrshire supplying 53% of Scotland's coal and 30% of the UK's coal. Many of these former mining sites may lend themselves to future renewable energy products, for example geothermal, and Paul will touch upon this later in the presentation. Now that the national agenda is switching to non-fossil fuels, interest in the Cumnock area has turned to renewable energy, and in particular, wind farms which have become a notable feature in its landscape. Despite this, only 2.9% of employed people in East Ayrshire are in the energy sector. With an increase in the number of wind farms, this also means that the area is generating more energy than is needed locally. A key driver for the NERD project is to ensure that the community are experiencing the associated benefits that the renewable energy industry can bring to the economy of the area. Next slide. Cumnock has experienced significant decline over the last 20 years. Some new employment has occurred, but not enough to compensate for other job losses. Communities have found it difficult to recover from the recession and have failed to attract a new industry to the area. Most significantly was the collapse of two of the open cast coal operators in 2013, which resulted in more than 300 local people losing their livelihoods. With no significant economic investment coming into the area since, the virtual collapse of the coal industry represented a major blow to the economic output of the Cumnock area. The legacy of unrestored land in the area has meant that physical connections be between communities have been cut off and parts of the rural area have been hazardous and inaccessible due to the past mine workings. Next slide please. So to overcome some of these challenges, the council, local organisations and the community have been working collaboratively to bring about a transformation. The Cumnock Conservation Area Regeneration Scheme undertook extensive regeneration works within the historical town centre of Cumnock by bringing key buildings back into use, enhancing the public realm and landscape improvements to increase the economic activity. The Princess Foundation have begun construction of their Knockroon housing development to the entrance of Cumnock, which demonstrates high quality design and sustainability principles. The new Barony campus incorporates two primary schools, two high schools and one additional support needs school and is an inclusive learning environment where state-of-the-art facilities are provided for children and young people of the Cumnock area. The new school is open is due to open later this month. Next slide please. So building on the work undertaken so far, the NERD project is the next step in Cumnock's transformation. One of the huge drivers for us to deliver this, this project is the community benefits that it can bring to the area. Critically, it will assist communities to generate, 
use and store their own low carbon energy and help to address fuel poverty through reduced spills by establishing a local energy company. The project will improve the active travel network across the area, helping to reconnect communities and give community access to a low carbon transport system. By attracting new businesses to the area, additional jobs will be created, in turn decreasing unemployment rates across Ayrshire. There will also be huge opportunities to work with higher and further education establishments to upskill the community to meet the, needs, need the skills requirements for the energy market. With communities at the heart, Cumnock can be Scotland's first truly sustainable town, an equitable place with a fair and just energy system that boosts the capability, economy, health and well-being of our local communities. So that gives you a whistle-stop tour of the Cumnock area and how we see the NERD project impacting on its communities. I'll now pass over to Paul, who will go into a little more detail as what we are proposing to do. Yep, folks, um, the, we, we were given the brief uh, by East Ayrshire Council, a uh, very bold brief uh, uh, to envision a 100% renewable energy system for the NERD region. Uh, which would provide some community benefit. So um, we uh, obviously with the uh, everything has to, to go 100% renewable and we've been working on, on modeling what the future energy system will look like. Um, the concept would be that all electricity would come from renewables, all the buildings, uh, heating, cooling, ventilation, cooking energy would come from uh, renewables and transport would come from renewables and waste would be minim minimized. And in order to do that, uh, the smart piece would be to have uh, smart buildings, smart EVs, smart district heating, smart hydrogen, but all of the, uh, the coordination of that smart, smart means the coordination and, and the value of flexibility. Uh, and you need to have that flexibility in order to be able to work with uh, intermittent renewables. And for the local region, the main intermittent renewable is, is wind. There are examples already becoming uh, commonplace of flexibility and the role of flexibility in balancing the electricity market. Uh, and there's a big uh, incentive now to, to have flexibility and to be able to exploit um, almost zero or sometimes negative price energy when there are surpluses on the system and to avoid taking energy from the system when there are no renewables and the prices are very high. So examples of that are the Octopus Agile tariff that's available at the moment. So, so the concept that we have for the future energy system when it's 100% renewable is that there will be some value for flexibility and there will need to be some backup strategy for when the renewables are, are not available and the flexibility is, um, is depleted. So smart buildings, smart districts, smart hydrogen, smart EV uh, and a smart um, energy supply system uh, are, are, are the vision of the future that we've uh, uh, superimposed on the East Ayrshire region. So um, our role uh, was to do data gathering and scoping and create a model of the current energy system and the potential future system and through that identify research and demonstrator opportunities uh, across smart energy system integration, transport buildings, hydrogen and alternate vectors and also looking at ecology and earth. Particularly in this region there are lots of geological uh, um, situations, uh, former mine workings, former uh, open cast quarries that can potentially be utilised. There's another uh, for, for heating or for other uh, energy components, but there's also the aspect of making sure that while we do this transition that we don't harm the environment and we do everything uh, in a way that's uh, positive for the ecology of the region while doing the energy transition. So our role was to identify um, demonstrator projects with the highest potentials and pro provide outline specifications for the investments that were going to take place. So the first thing we did was we, we modelled uh, the local region, did a mapping exercise, and we found that even with existing wind farms, there's 10 times as much uh, electricity produced uh, as, as uh, compared with the amount of electricity that's used in the region. And even if we consider all the transport and heat energy that's currently used, there's twice as much renewable energy from wind as the total energy used in the region. So there is a, a very... Uh, a good reason to cite this kind of energy transition project here uh, because there, there's uh, a great potential within the local region. Uh, this map also shows all the different post-industrial sites that could be repurposed uh, and these were all taken into account in, in, in scoping the potential for the project. 
Um, so the the mapping of how we're going to do the future energy system, um, this uh, diagram just illustrates uh, if we're going to have main, our main source from wind, then we'll have renewable electricity. Uh, whenever the wind blows, whenever it doesn't blow, we'll have to have some sort of storage or some backup from hydrogen uh, to provide the renewable uh, energy that we need in, in periods when there's no wind. Um, the most efficient way, uh, if just through this mapping exercise, uh, to, to cover the heat demand would be through heat pumps with thermal storage to allow the heat pump to be uh, synchronised with local wind. And for every one kilowatt hour generated in the wind, we would generate 216 uh, 2.16 kilowatts or 216 efficiency in terms of kilowatt hours of heat. Uh, so that would be, you know, the winningest strategy, if you like, for electrification of heat and for renewable heat in the local region. Uh, of course, if we can reduce the demand by doing upgrades to the buildings in terms of something like Enerfit, then we can reduce the heat demand by three. And really, we're, 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 our utilization of energy is, is, is very, very good um, if, we, if we take that strategy approach. So that, that sort of underpins our thinking uh, for the local region. Uh, secondly, on transport, uh, electric vehicles would be key. Um, and, and for every one kilowatt hour generated by wind, if we use an electric vehicle, uh, um, uh, 0 0.7 of that kilowatt gets directly transported into, into transport energy which is twice as much as if you go the hydrogen route. So uh, we think that this will be the dominant technology in the local region to utilize wind. Uh, uh, however, we, we would have a strategy similar to the energy efficiency uh, for heating uh, to get people to use active transport and, and minimize um, individual transport or maximize the use of public transport to, again, uh, bring down the total energy demand so that the, the, the whole system becomes uh, much more usable. Uh, and I've talked about uh, we, we should be using the electricity from the wind if we can uh, when the wind blows and uh, make sure any surpluses are minimised. Currently in the local region there's £12 million a year being paid to switch wind turbines off uh, because there's too much in the grid. So there's a big opportunity to get low cost or zero cost electricity instead of uh, paying to have the wind turbines switched off. And uh, as a backup strategy, hydrogen would come into play. So we created a model for the local region uh, following this template that would allow it actually to be 100% renewable in the future. That would involve putting in a hydrogen uh, CCGT plant in one of the post-industrial sites to provide the balancing mechanism for when the wind doesn't blow for, for periods uh, of high pressure. So we've mapped that into the local area, how that could work. Um, we, we, and we've, we've um, said that we need to have some sort of uh, local energy supply company that allows local residents and businesses to access the cheap electricity at times when there are surpluses. So there needs to be some sort of functionality of that. Um, the, the local grid will have to be managed to allow um, grid investments to be minimized while we electrify heat uh, and electrify transport. Um, that will probably involve the implementation of some sort of storage mechanisms to reduce the peaks. Um, we think that there's opportunities locally to exploit the post-industrial sites in terms of heating. Uh, there's lots of opportunity for uh, smart buildings in many districts and a smart hydrogen hub uh, should be uh, put in place in the local region as well as a smart transport network that will be low carbon and 100% renewable. So that's the kind of vision and uh, we've envisaged that the NERD centre would be the catalyst for that and it'd be a state-of-the-art building uh, and it would host, uh, it itself would be an exemplar of a 100% smart uh, renewable building that would uh, operate on renewables and within it there would be five technical hubs looking at smart energy, smart transport and public realm, smart building systems um, and smart hydrogen and smart earth geology and circular economy. And each of these hubs would uh, then uh, fulfill the function of research and innovation and support local businesses uh, in the energy transition and attract other businesses to the region that want to uh, participate in this energy transition. So, so that's the whole idea and there'd be a sixth hub which wouldn't have physical infrastructure 
um, in terms of kit, but would also be a very important hub within the NERD Centre. And that before focused on the socio-economics, health and well-being aspects of the energy transition to make sure that none of that is compromised and that the local community benefits are really um, uh, measured, monitored and uh, are, are delivered in reality. So that's the, the centre of excellence that's envisaged. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about what the specifications for that building uh, are. Uh, and then uh, in parallel with the, the Catalyst building, there would be an ambition to initially seed a number of uh, defined demonstrator projects for the energy transition throughout the local region to get the community engaged, to demonstrate the transition, to allow people to, 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 to see it and to engage with it, and then to stimulate further uh, adoption from the community and further businesses uh, to come to the area. Um, so they, they are uh, defined as part of the NERD pro programme of work. Um, the, the, but NERD can be much bigger once we have this research and innovation centre in place, the idea is that it will become self-sustaining and, and attract major projects from elsewhere uh, to come and site themselves in the local area. So there is a whole uh, demonstrator project list. I'm not going to go through that in detail. It, it maps out what could happen in on gas grid regions, uh, in off gas grid communities, uh, integration with major industry nearby, etc and integration with local tourism and, and uh, transport hubs and, and health service, etc. So I'll just give some examples um, of what we're uh, anticipating for the local area. Uh, we're going through the design process for the NERD centre building itself. Um, and we are benchmarking a number of uh, buildings which have been developed the state-of-the-art uh, enterprise centres that should be uh, support um, innovation but also support public access and it should be itself an exemplar of um, a sustainable smart building. Uh, so we've outlined what the delivery process should be. It's going to be built to Pacify standard. It should have BM standard of um, sustainability. It should be delivered through soft landings and it will, a very important aspect is it's going to have public uh, domain uh, benchmark uh, energy and indoor environmental data displayed. So it's really going to work in practice and not just be, um, get a green tick for design. Um, the key element is that it should be built uh, to minimize its energy demand and also for that energy demand to be satisfied through 100% renewables. So the uh, idea is that the building will have a PV roof. It will have a, a large, large battery that allows it to take energy that's uh, green and low cost uh, off the grid at times of surplus, and then be able to sail through periods when the electricity is coming from carbonized grid uh, by using the stored energy in the battery. Similarly, on the heating side, it's gonna have a, a, a heat pump and a heat store and a smart box that allows that heat pump to be synchronized with uh, surpluses in local renewables and the need for balancing in the local grid. Uh, so it can uh, grab electricity at low cost or zero cost and, and uh, the electricity be 100% renewable that runs the heat pumps to supply the heating for the building. So it's an exemplar of a, a smart building. We're also gonna apply that smart building uh, uh, makeover uh, to uh, domestic buildings uh, and non-domestic buildings through a retrofit process and we have in mind that they will have the smart kit to allow them to um, work on 100% renewables but also they'll be built very efficiently and delivered through an energy sprung methodology and uh, be uh, constructed to interfit standards to really bring down the energy demand and make sure it can be easily satisfied by renewables and, and meet the requirements for building performance so that it delivers comfort and well-being for the occupants and very low energy costs. Uh, there are lots of um, areas that, in urban areas, uh, particularly in Cumnock and Auchinleck uh, and the other towns where there's opportunities for doing these retrofits to interfit standard at a kind of mini, dist mini district scale. Uh, and have an energy center, for example, for blocks of a single block of flats. And that's another approach that we piloted in the demonstrators. Um, we're also looking in rural areas and there there's more opportunity to repurpose some of the post-industrial sites as um, community owned um, 
renewable generation sites or commu community interest renewable generation sites, um, the environmental impact of putting uh, wind or PV on old industrial sites is very much less than um, uh, going on, on peat or any natural environment. So there's a big opportunity there. There's very high wind in the local area and um, there's the opportunity to, to extract uh, ground source water to provide ground source heat. Uh, to the heat pumps uh, in the local communities and also use the electricity locally uh, to uh, provide charging points and, and battery storage associated with the local uh, transport hub. So that's the vision for the rural areas and, and for the urban areas and uh, we've also uh, looked at uh, transport and how we connect to different areas. Transport is about a third of the energy use because the local areas become pretty much a commuter belt with lots of travel. Um, to Kilmarnock and, and, and Glasgow for, for work opportunities. We obviously want to reverse that, but uh, we, we want to then also take uh, people so that they can do active travel to train stations, maybe get electric trains uh, in future and uh, have the opportunity to cycle or, or to walk um, through safe uh, active travel corridors. So a mapping exercise has been put together and a number of hubs have been identified. Uh, at train stations, bus stations, uh, community centres, uh, town halls uh, and um, uh, hospitals etc. But um, one major opportunity in the local area is that there's a new school has just been built uh, and that's going to recast all of the transport uh, for the local area and there's a big opportunity there to promote uh, active and low carbon travel um, with regards to tra tra travel to school. Um, so that's been mapped out and a number of hubs identified associated with that. And uh, the idea is that there'll be Wi-Fi apps, information portals, lighting and security so that people are connected and they feel safe using these uh, active travel corridors. And there's also a big uh, tourism opportunity where people could come to the, the Nerd Centre and get information on e-bikes and go exploring the local area. Uh, the area has, is very rich in terms of um, natural history, industrial history, uh, nature um, and also social history in terms of uh, mining and also in terms of junior football. There's uh, a lot of uh, rich history in terms of burns and also associated with Knockroon uh, and, and the different uh, uh, aspects of the Knockroon estate which is owned by, the Prince, Char by Prince Charles. Um, so there are lots of things to do in the local area and we're hopeful that uh, this low carbon infrastructure, people will come to see it, but they'll also come to use it uh, and it, people will it will attract industry and innovation to the local region. Um, a number of the key partners have been involved in the steering group uh, throughout the process of developing the NERD project um, and they are illustrated here and I'll maybe hand back to Lorna just for the final words on the project. Yeah, thanks, Paul. So that's kind of a, a, a whirlwind of what we're proposing for um, through the National Energy Research Demonstrator Project. And Paul and I are happy to answer any questions um, or take part in further discussion. OK, thanks, uh, Paul and Lorna. Um, I didn't see any questions specifically in the Q&A in the chat, so I don't know if anybody wants to um, add any. But I, I have a question, I suppose, is that um, would you be actually looking for any discussion collaboration with any groups outside of Ayrshire because this seems quite new. Um, I think it's quite bold and what you're trying to do here. Um, so I just wondered what kind of con uh, connections you already had with uh, organisations that are trying to do the same thing elsewhere. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, through the kind of um, business case process that we've been following um, for the Ayrshire Growth Deal, um, we've been encouraged by government to kind of branch out and communicate with other centres, projects um, throughout Scotland and uh, in England who are doing something similar. So, for instance, we've been in, in uh, contact with Borderlands, who are a neighbouring um, growth deal to us. Um, they are doing an energy master planning um, project within their growth deal. Um, so we've been talking with them and discussing how we can collaborate 
um, with them um, once they know what kind of projects they want to undertake. Uh, we've also been talking with um, the HALO project, which is uh, going to be located in Kilmarnock, and they have a renewable energy um, aspect to their project as well. So we've been um, discussing with them how the two projects can share learnings um, and collaborate on some education um, courses um, for the neighbouring uh, Ayrshire College. Um, we've also been in contact with um, a few other centres um, around Scotland, um, the PNDC in Glasgow, um, through um, obviously Brian Cross at ETP. Um, but we are looking um, to take that discussion further and um, further afield with any other centres who are like us or who um, are maybe doing something different that we're not doing that we can maybe um, you know, share knowledge um, and, and learnings um, with. So we're more than happy and open to talk to other projects um, around Scotland. Okay, yeah, thanks for that, Lorna. Sorry, Paul, yeah. I was just going to chip in to say that the, the big idea here is to have this as a, a, a community-based rural um, transition project and, and, and that we... we uh, we will seek to partner with the other centres like PNDC, like Construction Scotland Innovation Centre, um, like the, the new centre that's going in at Guardbridge, north of St Andrews. Uh, and, and obviously there are some aspects that are done elsewhere, like hydrogen Aberdeen um, uh, and things like that. And uh, the idea here with this is to, is to work in collaboration and not to duplicate, but to amplify and synergize with the other centers um, and and so the we've been quite careful to, to 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 pitch it so that we 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 can do that and we think this is quite a distinctive offering where it's the integration implementation uh, across a region with a community uh, partner that's uh, uh, quite unique and also the range of different technologies that are to be integrated the the big thing here is the integration piece of how the, the, the interconnectivity uh, and the virtual power plant type of system that's going to be the, the backbone of the, the future um, energy system. Uh, so it's all about the integration and, and we don't think that there's, um, we think there's good synergy with the other centres and, and initiatives going on um, and, and certainly that's the way um, that is being approached is that there should be partnership and partnering and, and, and synergy and leveraging of knowledge from elsewhere. Um, yeah, certainly the closest thing I think I can imagine to it would be uh, probably Orkney in that kind of off-grid community project style that you're, you're talking of just here. Uh, in some ways, Cumnock is a bit like that. It, it's an island, isn't it? It's just a, it's just a land island. Um, I do have a question here from Bill, uh, Bill McDonald. Hi, Bill. Um, the question is, are you keen to interact with universities where appropriate? Do you have problems you would look for support from the academic base? Uh, yeah, I can take part of this and then Paul, maybe I'll hand over to you for the second part. Um, yeah, we are open to working collaborati collaboratively with um, all the universities in Scotland. Obviously, we've been working really closely with Strathclyde um, over the last year or so, um, and we would like to keep um, that partnership going. But um, obviously, we have the University of West of Scotland campus um, in air, so we would hope to kind of collaborate um, with the, themselves as well as trying to offer um, courses for students um, in the renewable energy sector as well. Um, so yes, we're more than uh, happy to talk to other universities across Scotland. Yeah, I, I guess already since announcing the, the, the NERD project, I guess the first public announcements of it were, were around a year ago. But um, East Ayrshire has been approached by various different agencies, uh, universities and non-universities uh, about potential projects that are synergistic with NERD uh, and the local vision. And uh, I guess East Ayrshire have, have, have welcomed those discussions and, and taken them forward in terms of fund, uh, project bids and things like that. So I guess you're, you're open to that on an ongoing basis, Lorna, yeah. Yeah, and I think this, the second part of the question was, um, was it problems we foresee? Is that correct, Stephen? It, yes, it, I think what they were, um, 
what Bill was saying is, are there specific problems or issues that um, academia could help you solve? Um, I think, yes, there is. Um, I think we probably need to, obviously off gas grid um, is, is a huge issue for us because quite a lot of our communities are off gas grid. Um, also kind of how, how do we transition a community in a rural area um, is, is, is a slightly bigger issue that we are trying to trying to solve um, with um, the University of Strathclyde's help. And um, Paul, I don't know if you think you, you can think of anything any specific um, problems that you maybe found when you were doing your research. Yeah, I, I think the, there are um, problems across each of the different themes. You know, um, I, I guess if you're thinking about um, you know the, the the smart buildings and the smart heat type of thing, there, there's a big trade-off at the moment between is it going to be you know the solution going to lie at the wind farm side where they're going to do things at large scale there or is it going to how much is the value going to be left in the market for the individual dwelling is that going to be satisfied through um electrical storage uh, phase change storage uh, standard thermal storage how much inherent flexibility is there in buildings if they're renovated to a high enough standard could do you need the heating to be on a, a regular so so the, 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 there are huge numbers of of uh, open questions i think uh, in terms, uh, a, a big issue is cost as well, how to do things cost effectively. Um, there's a big element of uh, acceptance. Uh, I guess that anywhere people are trying, you know, I'm very uh, open to the fact that as an engineer, I, I can uh, propose solutions, but they're not solutions unless the people um, are happy with and, and happy to adopt them and get the benefit that I think they might get out of them. So on the, the socioeconomic health and well-being, there's, there's a big thing about how people adopt and how to get people to adopt or, or how to encourage people to adopt or maybe the answer is actually they'll adopt something if it's the right thing and so how to get to the right thing and incorporate that aspect into into the offering I think is okay so just a uh, sorry a follow-on question then from Patrick McCarthy hi Patrick how are you doing okay um, so this is a follow-on question to the bit about engaging with academia and the way that academia works of course is um, if you if you are if the nerd is wanting to engage with academia will there be calls issued or the question is i suppose how is the nerding intending to engage with academia so so i i guess there is discussion just now about the operational model uh, and i guess we the, the, there are two things going on in parallel one is uh, the building design is is proceeding uh, and the second one is the operational model is is being discussed and and currently the operational model Paul, we've lost you we can't hear you we can see you but we can't hear you okay i don't know lorna maybe you want to take this can you hear me lorna I can yeah i can hear you yeah so so so, so the operational model i guess that um we're hoping to replicate um uh, and there is a funding bid going out forward at the moment to replicate kind of what ETP does in terms of uh, having that functionality within the NERD's operation. Um, so that there would be calls and there would be, uh, you know, calls that are relevant that are happening elsewhere. So the, uh, and so, so there would be that kind of process of matching industry with university with funding calls and local opportunities that the local authority might, you know, have match funding for that type of thing. Okay, thank you. That, that, that's the answer. Sure. Okay. Uh, and I think we've got a final question here from Ian McGrath. Hello, Ian. Um, it says, "Do you have much buyer room, and how is your economy being maximised for the project and region?" Wow, that's a big question. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Mark, I didn't hear the first part of that question. So the question is, do you have much bio resource and how is the circular economy being maximised for the project and region? Uh, well, I mean, all the, the money, the projects being supported, uh, as, as we've said, through the Ayrshire Growth Deal. So all the money that's been spent on the project is coming from that. However, 
with the demonstrator projects, we are hoping that we can um, include a level of match funding um, to each demonstrator project so that we're bringing, we're bringing in more resources um, to the area as well as to the centre and to the, um, the research and, um, project and the projects that are, are going forward. Um, in terms of the circular economy, we've been talking with our architects when we've been um, bringing up the design of the building about how we utilise the circular, the circular economy from the, build, from the building and from the outset basically. So reusing um, recyclable materials, um, using, um, using things, uh, materials that are local to the area um, and capitalising on what Cumnock, um, what Cumnock and the surrounding area does does best, um, basically. Paul, I don't know whether you want to jump in here. Yeah, I, I guess that the, the, there is the opportunity. I guess in terms of bioresource, the, the the plan is there, there's a, there's sewage and, and things like that in the local area, and the, the plan is to pick up waste heat and, and maybe um, do do something with, with with connecting to that. And to, it's right in the centre of the new development in Cumnock. There's a, a wastewater treatment plant. Um, in terms of the, the, there have been discussions about you know forestry and biofuels in that kind of regard. I guess that um, most of the current thinking, in my mind anyway, is, is that you know the the restoring the ecology uh, would probably be the priority. Uh, I guess the the farming locally, um, it, it it there is to there is I, I guess there's dairy. Um, to, to the more sort of uh, to to the west uh, and and of 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 Cumnock, but it's not really. It's more into the um, the sort of moorland type of habitat that the is is the largest amount of land uh, surrounding um, Cumnock. So, I, I guess that in terms of bioresource, I, I guess that there hasn't been too much uh, spring out in terms of opportunity for doing uh, bioresource other than the fact that there were things like forests um, and and forest uh, you know re restoration of the former industrial land and how that can be done most effectively but I think that most of the thinking has been about how to restore those places maybe use them for renewable energy generation uh, but not really in terms of creating a bioresource um, but but it, it, you know there, there are I think 19 or 26, Lorna, of the post-industrial sites that need to be repurposed at some point. Yeah, uh-huh. So, so, so there is that opportunity for um, reusing those in some way. I, I'm not sure if the question was about uh, using bioresource as a, as, a, as, a, as a raw material or using it as an alternative to fossil fuels or whether it was biofuels for energy or... Um, or, or, or I, I guess the, so the whole circularity and is is a big part of making sure that you know that the, I guess we've identified the the Earth Hub, which is going to cover geology, environment, circularity. Uh, so uh, I, I would probably defer to my colleagues who are experts in that field a bit on on, on exactly the direction of travel for that branch of research. But yeah. It hasn't really sprung out as being a, 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 ma a major issue other than, you know, in terms of crops or purpose, um, hasn't really sprung up as being uh, a main item. Okay, uh, thanks for that. We have time just to um, squeeze in one more before the end of our period, which is in eight minutes. So again, this is from me and McGrath. Hello, Ian, again. Um, the question is, although you have high amount of wind, the market for buying the power is set up in a UK wide market. Are you doing something innovative to access the value local power for this different from how it works at the moment? Yeah, well, the, the, we are following the, the market deregulation and the valuing and the flexibility markets and looking at power purchase agreements. Um, uh, and and uh, uh, so so yeah, that that's a big part of it. So we, we plan to implement a virtual power plant uh, across the local region, uh, to use the local region uh, to take positions in the wider market, and also to um, to look at you know things like self-consumption versus export versus store, 
um, uh, uh, w within the, the, the local uh, energy system. And we're very conscious that the fact there might be distribution network um, services opening up in future. And um, so we're, we're planning to have the NERD center uh, income that have a one megawatt hour, one megawatt battery to allow it to play seriously uh, within the local distribution network and also in the wider uh, electricity markets. So we're kind of uh, over the 10 years of this project, um, many new opportunities will open up uh, to optimize uh, locally, to maybe offset um, investments locally. Uh, where um, you, you adding some storage or flexibility with a, a control system might mean you'd, you can do something that previously would have required a very large capital investment uh, through active network management and virtual power plant technology. So, so uh, the, 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 the whole idea is that this, this um, we're looking locally, but considering how the local area can optimize its position within the wider um, uh, electricity markets as well as being optimized locally. Um, so okay, then, Paul, yeah, thanks for that. Um, I think we must be there. We've got five minutes left, so I think we'll, we'll stop that. Um, thank you very much for all the questions. Thank you, Paul and Lorna, um, for agreeing to speak today. It really is a fascinating project, um, and I would look forward to see what's going to happen with it over the next few years, how it develops, because actually it's not so very far from Stuart, it's uh, um, still in East Ayrshire. So it certainly could be a model for uh, for other places that are like it. So anyway, everybody, thank you for attending. Um, we'll stop now. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Lorna. Arrivederci. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks.